I'm really starting to look forward to autumn now. Uh, and we get a bit fed up of watering on the allotment. And, you know, we get a little bit tired of the massive harvests all the way through summer and all the preserving, dehydrating and freezing and all of that. And it's kind of time for a change and a change is coming. The weather is getting a lot colder. So that means a lot less watering to do. It means the end really of uh, the peppers and the outdoor beans and tomatoes and things like that. And all the summer lettuce beds are all coming to an end. So it's a really nice time of renewal. And today it's a kind of milestone really when I start to replant the polytunnel. And so we've got so many plans for this polytunnel this year. I'm really excited to share them once I get around to uh, doing a video about it. But today I'm just doing a simple planting video and I'm going to put in some um, stir on spring onions and some lettuces and I've already got some parsley in. Um, but uh, yeah, just making a start. And I'll talk a little bit about the planting plan for the polytunnel, but I won't kind of reveal all the details in this video. So let's get on. So this is the bed that I'm planting. But one of the things that I'm doing this year is I'm removing these trestle table panels, um, two of them. So I'll have some at the ends, but I won't have the ones in the centre. And that'll open up a lot more light to this bed uh, than I've had in previous years. And also the trestle table kind of does shade this bed as well a little bit. Um, so again, it'll, it'll open up a lot of light generally in the polytunnel. It used to be key to us to have this trestle table for harvesting because we used to do all of our harvest packing and cleaning on the allotment, but we do that at home now, so we don't actually need the trestle table quite so much. It also used to be covered with seedlings at this time of year, but all of our seedlings are at home now, so um, almost all of them. So let's get on with the clear up. I've got to harvest all of these peppers and then clear up this top trestle table a little bit to make some space and then get planting. So I've tightened up all the brackets that support these trestle tables because there's kind of going to be a non-symmetrical load placed on this this side here when I take these off. Um, but I've always, I'm pleased that I designed these the way that I could so that they're easily removable. And I've just created somewhere to store them. So they fit really nicely there behind the shed. And what a difference that makes. And it's going to make a difference to the whole bed, even these little bits that are underneath here, because obviously all the sun after about 10 o'clock or something like that will stream in from this side into there and early morning sun into that little end bit there. This centre area next year is going to be more vertical growing things. So I'm not going to put peppers in here next year. I've got loads of space outside for peppers in my low tunnels. Um, so it's going to be tomatoes and maybe some melons and maybe some other goodies in the centre area. And that means I'm going to concentrate planting these little areas here with things that I just want to bring on nice and early. So early garlic and early uh, onions, although not those onions because they're a little bit too far on. They'll just go to seed when, they, when they're that big at this time of year. They have to be quite small as they overwinter if you don't want them to go to seed. So that's the straggly mess that's left. And I got this nice bucket of Anaheim peppers. They're quite nice because they kind of mature, but the green ones are, are relatively mild and obviously the red ones are quite fiery. So they're quite a versatile pepper. And what I'm doing this year is I'm not taking the roots out, I'm just snipping them out um, with my pruning shears. So I'm going to just uh, do that. And I've done this on pretty much everything this year, just snipping the roots off like that. 
um, maybe a little bit further down in the soil uh, but obviously I was doing that one-handed um, yeah and it, I think it's uh, it's a pretty good strategy I've done it for all the kales and broccolis and everything and I'm going to do it for the tomatoes as well so uh, yeah definitely no dig for me from that perspective so it looks like I timed it well to take these uh, peppers out because as you can see there's a few green fly on at least one of the leaves I don't want any green fly in this polysol now so I've just I'm not doing anything with this soil much I'm not uh, digging it or anything like that just smoothing it level and I've just put a little bit of blood fish and bone on the surface and literally that's just two handfuls uh, for this bed so four handfuls in total I don't think there's much nutrients needed there's a lot still left I think in this bed after the peppers I'm not going to put any compost on the surface I'm going to do that in the spring when I replant uh, just because it's still pretty full um, so I want to talk about watering now now these beds in the polysol can get pretty dry and so I've started redoing it re-hydrating um, the bed um, about two maybe three weeks ago just putting a little bit of extra water on uh, so that it's nicely hydrated a couple of inches down I don't like drowning it with a huge amount of water just at replanting time you know I like the water to gradually soak in over a few weeks and it's pretty close to uh, being ready for for planting now I spotted a few green fly on the uh, on the compost I don't know whether you can see moving around there so I think I'll just give this a little bit of a spray with pyrethium which is an organic insecticide um, it's just not worth the risk really I'll probably put a bit of maybe I might even just do neem oil I don't know but um, yeah I'll do that and then I'll water and then I'll plant so I've dipped all my hobbles and down there as well so I've just got to water them now and then these are the lettuces that I'm planting so I've got most of the beds going to be Grenoble red and then alternate ones down the center are going to be uh, Tessie and Roxy and the reason I'm doing that is I'm just kind of marking down the center where I, I will be taking the lettuces out in late January early February and putting in cauliflowers and calabrese I'll leave the lettuces in until the um, cauliflowers and calabrese kind of overwhelm them so that's the reason I'm doing it just a aid to memoir really as to where I'm do where I'm planting those and why and I've got these little white Lisbons and so yeah they're going in the centres so if oh you'll see it when I do it so that's the first bed planted and I love planting them out this small I think this is the best size really for planting lattice bigger than this and they don't survive as well and they often don't take as well so watering wise I am not going to water these very much more now for three or four days probably and I'll give them just a little bit more just in the root zone uh, I want them to go deep and the reason that I want the roots to go deep particularly at this time of year is because I want the surface to be as dry as possible for as long as possible just to reduce the risk of uh, any kind of damping off or anything like that and I think that's especially important when we get to December and January when I probably won't water these at all so by then I need them to have roots going really deep down so that I don't have to worry about watering 
and I'll only water when I do on really nice warm sunny days when I can have the doors open good ventilation so that all the leaves and everything are nicely dried off so it's worth just talking a little bit about spacing I'm putting these in about 10 inches between each plant last year I put four in a row I decided to put the spring onions in as well and so I've just reduced the density a little bit I want a better balance we didn't quite have enough spring onions last year to get us through um, and obviously you're yeah, harvesting the lettuces many many times um, whereas the uh, spring onions are just a single crop so you do need quite a lot um, now if your temperatures are lower than ours then you might not suffer from fungal issues so if you're regularly getting hard frosts then uh, a lot of people uh, who do that you know they can plant much more densely than this and basically have a complete co uh, cover of green uh, so you can't even see the soil or the compost in, a, in my environment you know we're getting many many days uh, above freezing and so fungal issues are much more of an issue for us so finally I've got the uh, tough ball onions these are overwintering onion uh, they're really reliable I've got about three seeds per module I've got 12 stations there dipped out and I'm going to plant uh, yeah, obviously one per station so that's 36 plants so that's basically a month supply so hopefully they'll come a little bit earlier than the ones outside and hopefully about a month earlier so we clear this bed in sometime in May uh, middle of May something like that and uh, hopefully the onions will be ready by then we don't want um, them to be too big going over winter if they are too big they're likely to go much more likely to go to seed um, it's a bit tricky knowing what size but these are probably slightly on the big side but I think they'll be okay anyway we'll give them a go it doesn't it's no big disaster if they do go to seed um, yeah no problem at all just take out the core and then I've just got this one more bed here which I'm going to put more Grenoble red in and I will put spring onions in I just don't have any right now I've left them at home so I'll get onto that later so that's that last bed of Grenoble red and white Lisbon spring onions in and I've only got one more bed now of Grenoble red which I won't be planting out until middle of October probably after the sweet potatoes are harvested and that one won't get harvested probably until very late in the year sort of December January time and that'll be the one that'll kind of carry on well into uh, well probably up until May actually so I'm going to put some garlic in now and I almost always use a dibber when I'm planting but for garlic I don't I'd rather just use my fingers because I don't want to create a sort of hard compressed pan at the bottom because the garlic roots just tend to push up and uh, and they push the garlic clove out so I'm just going to make loads of holes and then pop these in so I planted them so the tips are about in my case one and a half inches below the surface and that's because the I've got quite a thick mulch on here and I want them a little bit deeper normally you'd plant them about one inch perhaps but I think uh, one and a half inches is appropriate here because of the mulch and that's it just cover them over so I've got I think 28 something like that close in here and that's enough for I don't know at least a month anyway and so uh, hopefully I'll get these about a month early uh, at a time when the stored garlic is kind of coming to an end so it is kind of nice just to get a bit of an early crop and that's why I put them in the polytunnel uh, just in the hope that I can push growth a little bit faster and that should be the case because I expect them to be growing about twice as fast 
in the polytunnel in spring as they are outside. So fingers crossed. Now I'm back at that little tiny onion bed and again what we're aiming for there is just the first month early but there's these massive spaces in this onion bed and these onions won't be using that space until they start bulbing and that won't happen until say April time. Now we will start harvesting green garlic in April and we'll finish the early green garlic crop um, and sort of May time and so I got all these spare garlic cloves from those few bulbs that I had there so I'm going to interplant them in here for um, in rows along there and I'm going to take those as green garlic as they come because this is going to be harvested as green garlic and it won't mature it doesn't need the space so I've planted this well just about an inch and a half two inches apart something like that so I've got 30 cloves in there for green garlic and again that's about a month's supply So that's all the planting done for today. I hope you like this quick video. My name's Steve, this is the Seaside Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon.